Well, here we are at the National Roadster Show. Now, I know it never rains in California, but we're getting a little of that right at the moment. But at least it's not snowing. Yeah. <laughs> but this is my baby here. This was not my firstborn, but I sure treat it that way. With four engines in one car, how can it not be spectacular? Let, let me tell you a little bit of how this works. Okay? We, you know, you don't just take a bunch of motors and throw it in one car and make it work. The hardest thing for me was when I went from one motor to two motors. Because the technical aspect of the thing, we weren't quite as sharp in those days as we are nowadays. But after I got used to running a multi-engine car, then I could have put ten motors in one car. But how this works is we've got these two motors here on the right hand side they're hooked together right from crankshaft to crankshaft which in essence makes a V16 out of the deal. Then it drives through one clutch right here and goes to an offset rear end with a short and a long axle in the thing and that runs the rear wheels. We took the other two motors and we put those in the chassis backwards. They were hooked together at the crankshaft which made another V16 out of them. But when we got to the rear end, we took the ring gear, put it on the other side of the pinion, which drove the front wheels backwards, which were then forward. So the idea of that was done for two reasons. One was they used to have inline twin cars, and when they go across the finish line, it would sort of dart a little when they pulled out of the throttle. Well, we thought, wow, with four motors, all that torque will steer it right off the track. So with them being in backwards and forwards, the torque went both ways, and it would let the car go straight forward with no ill effect. The trick, what we would do, one of the tricks, too, is we would take and we'd fire one on that motor, one on this motor, one on that motor, and one on this motor and the same thing on this side. It would keep a smooth delivery of horsepower to the rear end and make the tire smoke less than it would. Now, with the car itself, we had to take and get an old World War II one-ton truck to get the knuckles off the thing up here in the front, you might see, so that it would stand the gaff of the thing. Now, Mickey Thompson, helped me quite a bit with this. He had already made a four-engine car that he was running on the salt flats. So we, he says, now, I know you're not going to like the weight because we wanted to use Jeep front knuckles, but he says, use the one ton and add the weight to it because the other one just wouldn't stand the gaff of the thing. The throttle linkage, that was another interesting thing right out here in the center of the deal. It, it had to work all four engines at one time and that was like a plumber's nightmare trying to get that all going. Now the mileage in this thing actually remember again it was 50 years ago this thing was made it took about a gallon to make a run so that's four miles to the gallon which isn't exactly the most economical thing had we have put fuel in it obviously it would have ate up a lot more.